Welcome, welcome, welcome tonight to a Saturday night short broadcast from the Church Without Judgment. You're with uh, Prophet Mark this evening. Shabbat Shalom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. What's going on, you guys? You're enjoying your 2023? I certainly am. I'm really enjoying it. God is doing some miraculous things right now. I'm going to do a, this isn't a black screen, but you see that yarn, you see that? That's a quilt, a comforter my mom made, and it's intertwined. You see the red, and then you see that green. Uh, but I want to emphasize it's woven together, and today we're going to be that much woven with the Lord. Today, a little while ago, I was thinking about the patriarchs. I was just thinking about the apostles. And then all of a sudden I saw a picture like in my mind about Peter, the apostle Peter. And then do you know how he was martyred? That word martyred is you die for a cause. Some martyr for evil, believing a lie, but they're still a martyr. We're martyrs for the remnant, the remnant Yahweh, the 12 apostles. Even Judas was a martyrdom. He committed suicide because he betrayed Jesus, but that's, that's another sermon. But I want to talk about today, Peter was crucified upside down. He was killed in such a way upside down so he would be humiliated and made a spectacle. So the name of this today is, do you think you have suffered for your faith? I'm going to say it again. The name of this is, and this is what God asked me, do you think you have suffered for your faith. Suffering, sometimes we cause our own suffering. Sometimes it's from others. Sometimes it's from situations. Your suffering could be from bad choices, bad company, bad environments. But today, if you feel that you have been denied, Benefits Today, if you feel that you keep trying to get what you need, you need resources and someone else gets them, I'm here to report to you that your suffering might not really be the suffering that you think. Because God wants to show us today that the apostles in the New Testament, the patriarchs in the Old Testament, because the old is concealed in Jesus, and the new covenant, the new testament of his blood, it is Jesus being revealed. So right now, I want to share with you about some serious suffering that happened in the New Testament. There was 12 apostles. Then they had to replace Judas after he gave up the ghost. But then he gave back. The silver, he threw it at the religious leaders because Jesus was pure. He did not ever sin. He was man, but he was all deity. We are humans. We're human. We're humanistic. Humanity, there is a scripture about humanity in the Old Testament. And one of the prophets says, Our righteousness is as a filthy rag. And that rag demonstrates in the Old Testament, that word rag in the Hebrew is a part of what the woman has to use monthly. We won't get into that topic, but our righteousness as a filthy rag, God says, compared to his divine nature and truth. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 11, if I may, and then we'll pray you on out. I'm going to start in Hebrews chapter 11, and I want to talk about the people of faith. When you have faith, you may have to be a martyr. 
That's why the Holy Spirit came. It came so that we would be endowed and we would be witnesses. That word witnesses, that word witness is, that word witness is to be a martyr, to witness to the world. That's why the Holy Ghost came for us in the book of Acts so that we could go to Samaria, Judea, and to the ends of the world. And that's what's happening now with the internet. Here we go. Hebrews 11, 29, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempted to do so were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, listen to this, the harlot, this is a prostitute, Rahab did not perish. Why? With those who did not believe. This prostitute believed, but she did more. When she had received the spies with peace, Joshua's two spies, 32. And what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Japheth? Also of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. We can do this right now. Work righteousness. They worked it. Obtain promises. Stop the mouths of lions. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Became vigilant in battle. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. You hear that? They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. We won't get into that. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection, that they may obtain a better resurrection. That's what we're looking for. That is at the last days. Still, others had trial of mocking, a scourging like Jesus. Yes, of chains and imprisonment. Listen to this. We have four other scriptures Today's sermon is, do you think you have suffered yet for your faith? They were stoned, they were sawed in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, being destitute, excuse me, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Sounds like us. They wandered in desert and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. David was in caves most of the time, but when he came out with his army, there weren't much, but God pursued him and took avenge of the enemy. Verse 39 and 40. And all of these having obtained a good testimony through faith did not receive the promise. Why? God having provided something better for us, that's us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. This explains not that there was just persecution and suffering, back, but the patriarchs from the old and the new, the old concealed, the new revealed are waiting for us so that we're made perfect together and it doesn't matter how it takes place. You may have in Thirst Thessalonian, you know about it, the rapture, but I'm here to tell you when we're made perfect, however God does that, that's when we're all coming together in the last days and we're going to be judged for righteousness. That's where we'll get our crown. That's where we'll get our new name. That's where we receive the full salvation and we're fully known. A lot of times we're wondering about religious things and we, we, we have questions about things and people ask me, what do you think about this, Mark? And then I'll tell them. Do you know when I'm in eternity, I'm not going to ask God about all that humanistic stuff that we could, he doesn't care about that. He cares about his children worshiping him. He cares about us wanting him more than the world. Today, did you see what they went through? That's why I wanted to explain to you, Peter was sawed in two and then he was hung upside down on a stake. 
Jesus was on the cross. He was too upside down. They saw him in two because he was the rock of the church. They were mad at him. They will be mad at you when you're the rock. So either we're going to be rock or we're going or either we're going to be the rock or we're going to be the silly putty and they're going to treat us as silly people. Also, before I got this word about a half an hour ago, no, it was probably two hours ago. You remember in John where Jesus talks about you will do greater works than I did. And when you don't really think about what he's saying, you're like, what is he talking about? He says, but he tells you why, because I go to the father. He's basically telling you his position has changed after the father says, well done. Now he's on his right hand. They're together on the throne, on the circle. Now he says, I've sent you the dudamus, the power from on high. Then he explained to me a couple hours ago that you, if you believe it, you will raise someone from the dead, Mark Connor. I was walking at the park today. He says, there was multiple resurrections in the old and the new. Do you think you can do one? God explained to me and exposed it. He goes, the only way y'all won't do it all, the miracles, if you don't believe it all. He told me, you will raise someone from the dead. Why am I telling you this? If you believe the word of God is true from Genesis to Revelation, whatever you believe, it is done. You can resurrect someone too. You just got to be there. It might be at a marketplace and then they call 911. Don't wait for the paramedics. Go there and lay on them like Elijah and they may, they probably shall recover if you have more faith. I've come to report today that the prophet says that if you suffered like them, then maybe you can speak. But he says there's more available, more grace, more mercy, and more truth. And the word of God will be there for you because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that is in you. You will never see the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. So if you think you've suffered a little, stay put. It's a long race. Someone's going to pass you the baton. And God told me to tell you, you can't fall asleep on the watch. I was in the Navy. And when you have a quarter deck watch, I had to patrol the whole ship for four hours. I had to go to the compartments. I had to do the fire watches. I had to talk to the people. And for four hours, if I'm caught sleep, I'm going to the brig. You're going to be in trouble. God says he's getting ready to hand you the baton. You will raise him from the dead. Deaf ears will open up. Eyes will recover sight. He says hepatitis, all of it will be gone. He's telling me to receive him and he will receive you and your breakthroughs at the door. But our suffering is not in vain because we're getting the crown of glory and not the crown of thorns in Jesus name. Shabbat Shalom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty in Jesus name for all that walks with the Lord Yahweh. He is Elohim. He is the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. He is Emmanuel. He is the I am Jesus Christ. Amen.